ഹരിഷ്ണുഭവ് ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതേ വാസുദേവായ ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതേ വാസുദേവായ ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതേ വാസുദേവായ ഓം അജ്ഞാനതിമിരാന്തസ്യാനാഞ്ജനശലാഖയ ചക്ഷുരുന്മീലിതം യേന തസ്മേ ശ്രീ ഗുരവേ നമ ശ്രീ ചൈതന്യമനോഭീഷ്ടം സ്ഥാപിതം യേന ഭൂതലെ സ്വയം രൂപകഥാമഹ്യം ദാതി സ്വപദാന്തികം വന്ദേഹം ശ്രീഗുരു ശ്രീയുതപതകമലം ശ്രീഗുരും വൈഷ്ണവംശ ശ്രീരൂപം സാഗ്രജാതം സഹഗണ രഘുനാഥാന്വിതം തം സജീവം സാധ്വേദം താപദൂതം പരിജന സഹിതം കൃഷ്ണ ചൈതന്യദേവൻ ശ്രീ രാധാകൃഷ്ണപാദ സഹഗണ ലളിത ശ്രീ വിശാഖാന്വിതാശ ഹേ കൃഷ്ണകരുണാ സിന്ധോ ദീനബന്ധോ ജഗത്പതി ഗോപേശ ഗോപികാകാന്ത രാധാകാന്ത നമോസ്തുതെ തപ്തകാഞ്ചന ഗൗരാംഗി രാധേ വൃന്ദാവനേശ്വരി വൃഷഭാനസുദേ ദേവി പ്രണമാമി ഹരിപ്രിയെ വാഞ്ചാകൽപതരൂപ്യശ്ച കൃപാ സിന്ധൂപേവ ച പതിതാനാം പാവനേഭ്യോ വൈഷ്ണവേഭ്യോ നമോ നമ നമോ വിഷ്ണുപാദായ കൃഷ്ണദൃഷ്ടായ ഭൂതരെ ശ്രീമതേ ഭക്തിവേദാന്ത സ്വാമിനിരുനാമിനെ നമസ്തേ സാരസ്വതേ ദേവേ ഗുരുവാണി പ്രചാരണി നിർവിശേഷ ശൂന്യവാദി പാശ്ചത്യദേശധാരണി ജയ ശ്രീകൃഷ്ണ ചൈതന്യ പ്രഭു നിത്യാനന്ദ ശ്രീ അദ്വൈത ഗദാധാര ശ്രീവാസാദി ഗൗരഭക്തവൃന്ദ ഹരേ കൃഷ്ണ ഹരേ കൃഷ്ണ 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 ഹരേ 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 രാമ ഹരേ രാം രാമ രാമ ഹരേ ഹരേ Hari Bol. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Okay, who wants to read the first or who wants to begin reading? Hari Bol. May I read, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna, enchanter of the soul. A man is attracted by a woman. A woman is attracted by a man. And when they are united in sex, their attachment for this material world increases more and more. But our business is not to be attracted by the glimmer of this material world. Our business is to be attracted by Krishna. And when we become attracted by the beauty of Krishna, we will lose our attraction for the false beauty of this material world. In this material world, everyone is attracted by sex. This is a fact. As the Srimad Bhagavatam says, Yan maithuna jigrihamet hi sukham hi tucham. The happiness, the so-called happiness, The so-called happiness of household life begins from my tuna of sexual intercourse. Generally, a man marries to satisfy sex desire. Then he begets children. Then when the children are grown up, the daughter marries a boy and the son marries a girl for the same purpose, sex. Then grandchildren. In this way, material happiness expands as Sri Aishwari Prajep Sevaha. Sri means beauty. Aishwari means wealth. and praja means children people think that they are successful if they have a beautiful wife a good a good bank balance and good sons daughters daughters in law and so on if one's family consists of beautiful women and riches and many and riches and many children one is supposed to be a most successful man what is this success the shastra scriptures says that this success is simply an expansion of sexual intercourse that's all We may polish it in different ways, but this same sex happiness is also there in the hogs. The hogs, uh, the hogs eat the whole day here and there. Where is stool? Where is stool? And then have sex without any discrimination. The hog does not discriminate whether he has sex with his mother, sister or daughter. So the Shastra says we are engaged in this material world only for sex. In other words, we are victims of Cupid. Cupid or Madonna is the god of sex unless one is induced by madana one cannot be unglanded and gladdened in sex life and one of krishna's names and one of krishna's names is madana mahana he who vanquishes cupid in other words one who is attracted to krishna will forget the pleasure derived from sex this is the test of advancement in krishna consciousness another meaning of madana is to intoxicate or madden everyone is maddened by the force of sex desire The Shrimad Bhagavatam says, Pumsak striya mithuni bhavam etam tayor mitho hridayam granthim aho. The whole material world is going, is going on because of, it, of the attraction between male and female. A man is attracted by a woman, a woman is attracted by a man. And when they are united in sex, their attachment for this material world increases more and more. After marriage, the man and woman seek a nice home and a job or some land for farming because they have to earn money to get food and other things then come suta children after friends and relatives and with their wealth in this way the attraction for the material world becomes tighter and tighter 
And it all begins with our attraction for Madonna, the pleasure of sex. But our business is not to be attracted by the glimmer of this material world. Our business is to be attracted by Krishna. And, we, and when we become attracted by the beauty of Krishna, we will lose our attraction for the false beauty of this material world. As Sri Yamanacharya says, Yadavadhi Mamachetaha Krishna Padaravinde Navanavarasadhamanya Ujjatam Rantumasid Tadavadhi Bhatanari Sangame Smaryamane Bhavati Mukhavikaraha Sushtu Nishtiva Namcham. Since I have been attracted by the beauty of Krishna and have begun and have begun and have begun to serve his lotus feet, I am getting newer and newer pleasure. And as soon as I think of sexual intercourse, my mouth immediately turns aside and I spit. So Krishna is Madana Mahana, the conqueror of Madana or Cupid. Madana is attracting everyone, but when one is attracted by Krishna, Madana is defeated. And as soon as Madana is defeated, we conquer this material world. <clears throat> Otherwise, it is very difficult. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita 714, This material world is very difficult to overcome, but if one surrenders unto Krishna and catches his lotus feet very strongly, Krishna, save me. Krishna promises, yes, I'll save you. Don't worry, I shall save you. My dear Arjuna, you can declare to the world that I will protect my devotee who has no other desire but to serve me. Unfortunately, people do not know that our only business is to, is to take shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna. We have no other business. Any other business we may do uh, simply entangles us in this material world. The aim of human life is to get out of the clutches of the material world. But as the Bhagavatam says, People do not know that their ultimate goal in life is to realize Vishnu or Krishna. Anyone can continue next, Hare Krishna. So it is very difficult to turn people to Krishna consciousness in this age. Still, Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has ordered us to distribute this knowledge all over the world. So let us try. Even if the people do not take our instruction, that is no disqualification for us. <clears throat> our only qualification is simply to try our best. Maya illusion is very strong. Therefore, to take the living entities out of the clutches of Maya is not a very easy thing. My Guru Maharaja had so many temples all over India, and sometimes he would say, if by selling all these temples I could turn one man to Krishna consciousness, my mission would be successful. He used to say that, our purpose is not to construct big, big buildings, although that is sometimes required for spreading Krishna consciousness and for giving shelter to people. But our main business is to turn the faces of the bewildered conditioned souls toward Krishna. That is our main purpose. Therefore, Bhaktivinoda, Thakura, Thakura and other Vaishnavas have warned us to be careful about constructing too, constructing too many big temples because our attention may be diverted toward material things. In other words, we may become forgetful of Krishna. Of course, ultimately, ultimately nothing is material. Thinking something is material is simply an illusion. Actually, there is nothing but spirit. How can there be anything material? The Supreme Lord is the Supreme Spirit, and since everything is coming from Him, what we call the material energy, energy is also coming from Him and is thus ultimately spiritual. But the difficulty is that in this material world, Krishna's inferior energy, there is the possibility of forgetting Krishna. People are engaged in so many activities, we can see this very clearly in the Western countries, and they are inventing so many modern facilities but the result is that they are forgetting Krishna. That is material. This forgetfulness of Krishna. Actually, there is nothing except Krishna and his energies. As Narada Muni says, Idam hi Vishwam Bhagavan Ivetaraha. This word is Krishna, Bhagavan. But to those in ignorance, it appears different from Bhagavan. For a Mahabhagavata, a pure devotee, there is no conception of material. Yeah, sorry. <clears throat> um, 
For a Maha Bhagavata, a pure devotee, there is no conception of material and spiritual because he sees Krishna everywhere. As soon as he sees anything we call material, he sees it as a transformation of Krishna's energy, Parinama Vada. Lord Chaitanya gave the following example. Stavara Jangama Deke Na Deke Tara Murti Sarvatrahaya Nija Ishta Deva Spurti A pure devotee may see a tree, but he forgets the tree and sees the energy of Krishna. And as soon as he sees the energy of Krishna, he sees Krishna. Therefore, instead of seeing the tree, he sees Krishna. Another example is the sun and the sunshine. As soon as you see the sunshine, you can immediately think of the sun. Is that not so? In the morning, as soon as you see the sunshine shining in your window, you can immediately remember the sun. You are confident the sun is there because you know that without the sun there cannot be any sunshine. Similarly, whenever we see something, we should immediately think of Krishna with reference to that particular thing because that thing is a manifestation of Krishna's energy. And because the energy is not dif different from the energetic, those who have understood Krishna along with his energies do not see anything except Krishna. Therefore, for them, there is no material world. To a perfect devotee, everything is spiritual. Sarvam kalv idam brahma. So we have to train our eyes to see Krishna everywhere. And this training is devotional service to Krishna, which is a process of purification. Sarvo padi padi vinirmuktam tatparatvena nirmalam rishikena rishikesa sevanam bhaktir uchyate. As soon as, the, as we are in Krishna consciousness, we give up our false dis designations and our seeing, touching, smelling and so on become nirmala or purified by being engaged in the service of Krishna. Then we can immediately see Krishna everywhere. As long as our eyes are not purified, we cannot see Krishna. But as soon as they are purified by the process of devotional service, we will see nothing but Krishna. So Cupid is one of the agents of the illusory material energy. But if we are perfectly in Krishna consciousness, Cupid cannot pierce our heart with his arrows. It is not possible. A good example is Haridasa Thakura. When Haridasa Thakura was a young man, a nicely dressed young prostitute came to him in the middle of the night and revealed her desire to unite with him. Haridasa Thakura said, yes, please sit down. I shall fulfill your desire, but just let me finish my chanting of Hare Krishna. Just see, it's the dead of night and in front of Haridasa Thakura is a beautiful young girl proposing to have sex with him. But still he's steady chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. But he never finished this chanting, so her plan was unsuccessful. So Cupid cannot pierce our heart when we are fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness. There may be thousands of beautiful women before a devotee, but they cannot disturb him. He sees them as energy of, energies of Krishna. He thinks they are Krishna's, they are meant for his enjoyment. <clears throat> a devotee's duty is to try to engage all beautiful wom women in the service of Krishna, not to try to enjoy them. A devotee is not pierced by the arrows of Cupid because he sees everything in relationship with Krishna. That is real renunciation. He does not accept anything for his own sense gratification, but engages everything and everyone in the service of Krishna. This is the process of Krishna consciousness. Thank you very much. Hari Bol. Anyone else can continue from the next chapter if anyone wants. Okay, okay Prabhu. Okay, Pranjal Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Yes. He's a Mahambala base in Sasol Gauri. Hare Krishna Prabhu. You can read next, Prabhu. All right. The spiritual master. Show bottle spiritualist exposed. Los Angeles, December 30th. 1968, a CBS television news reporter asked for Srila comments on the many, many newly arisen group of the late 60s who were performing among the other things, power, influence, stress, control, and salvation. This no holds bad in barred interview exposes many current religious philosophies and practices Chirababa declares, the man who says he's God, he's a rascal number one. Generalist. I think 
an awful lot of our readers and an awful lot of our people in the United States are terribly confused with many people who claim to be gurus and gods and who pop up in this country one after another. And yet they say that, Chiragopad, I can declare that they are all nonsense. Journalist. I wonder if you could elaborate on that a little bit. Chiragopad. I can say furthermore, they are all rascal. Journalist. For example, the famous one who tells, who tells meditation mantras. Chiragopad, he is rascal number one. I say it publicly. Journalist, can you explain me, uh, give me a little background on that. Why? Because our readers, Shirobad, from his behavior, I can understand he's rascal number one. I do not want to know about him. But what has he done makes it obvious. But the wonderful thing is that people in the Western countries are supposed to be so advanced. How are they be fooled by these rascals? Generalist, when I think that the people are looking for something and he's, he comes along. Yes, but they want something very cheap. That is their fault. Now, for our disciples, we do not give anything cheap. The first condition is the character, moral character, you see. Unless one is strictly following the moral principles, we do not initiate them. We do not allow him in this, in this industry, institution. And this so-called guru has been caught telling people, just do whatever you like. You simply pay me $35 and I'll give you a mantra. You see, so people want to be cheated. And so many cheaters come. People do not wish to undergo any discipline. discipline. They have got money, so they think we shall pay and immediately we'll get whatever we want. Analyst, instant heaven. So, but yes, this is that is their foolishness. Analyst, let me ask you. I have my opinion, but let me ask you: Why do not? Why do you feel that younger people today are running more and more towards the Eastern-oriented religions? But because because your materialistic way of life is no longer satisfies them in America, especially you've got enough for enjoyment. You've got enough food, enough women, enough wine, enough houses. Enough of everything, but still you have no confusion. Still you have confusion and dissatisfaction more in your country than in India, which is said to be poverty stricken. But you'll find in India that although they are poverty stricken, they are continuing their old spiritual culture. So the people are not as disturbed. It shows that material wants and not cannot give one satisfaction. If they really want on satisfaction, people must take to the spiritual life. This will make them happy. All these people, they are in darkness. They know there is no hope. They do not know where they are going. They have no aim. But when you are spiritually situated, you know that what you are doing, where you are going, everything is clear. In other words, you, in other words, you feel that the Western-oriented church, whether it is a synagogue or a church or whatever, has failed to present spiritual life. Would you say that their message is not relevant or is it that they have to present their message properly? So, uh, take, the, take, it, take the Bible. If it was spoken long, long ago to primitive people who were living on the desert, these people were not very advanced. So at that time, the, in the Old Testament, it was sufficient to say there is a God, there is God, and God has created the world. That is a fact, but now people are scientifically advanced and, this, and they want to know in detail how the creation is taking place, you see. Unfortunately, the detailed scientific explanation is not there in the Bible and the church cannot give any more than that. Therefore, the people are not satisfied. Simply officially going to the church and offering prayers does not appeal to them. Besides that, the so-called religious leaders are not following even the most basic religious principle for a for instance, the Old Testament, there are ten commandments. One commandment is that thou shall not kill. But the killing is very prominent in the Christian world. The religious leaders are sanctioning sex slaughterhouses. They have manufactured a theory that animals have no soul. Give dog a bad name and hang it. So when we ask, why are you coming, committing the sinful act of killing? The peace refused to discuss the matter. Everything is, everyone is silent. That means they are deliberately disappoint, 
disobeying the Ten Commandments. So where are the religious principles? It is plainly stated, thou shalt not kill. Why are they killing? How are you? How do you answer? Then are, are you asking me? But yes. Well, thou shalt not kill is obviously an ethic. And it's timeless. And it's valid. But man is not really interested. Robot, yes, that's right. They're not really interested in to in religion. It is simply a show model. And if you do not follow the religious principles, then where is your religion? Generally, I'm not arguing with you, but I could not agree with you more. I'm in total agreement. It doesn't make any sense. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall worship no other gods before me. Thou shall not cover none thine neighbor's goods. Thou shall not honor thy father and thy mother. Those are beautiful. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. But who is following this? Very few. So how can they say they are religious? And without religion, human society is animal society. All right. But let me ask you this. How does your interpretation differ from the basic Judeo Christian ethic of Ten Commandments? There is no difference. Friends, but as I've told you, none of them are strictly following the Ten Commandments. So I simply say, please follow God's commandments. That is my message. In other words, you are asking them to obey those principles. But yes, I say that Christians should become Hindu. I simply, I do not say that Christians should become Hindu. I, I simply say, please obey your commandments. I'll make you a better Christian. That is my mission. I do not say God is not in your tradition. Tradition. God is only here in us. I simply say, obey God. I do not say you have to ex accept that God's name is Krishna and no others. No, I do not say that. Please obey God and please try, please try to love God. Generalist, let me put it this way. If your mission and the mission of the Western Judeo Christian ethic are the same, then again, let me ask why is it that the younger people and the people in general are disconnected? and try to go toward Eastern oriented religion, why are they going towards Eastern if both are the same? Because Judaism and Christianity are not teaching their, them practically. I'm teaching them practically. Unless, in other words, if you're teaching, you're teaching them what you feel is a practical everyday method for attaining this fulfillment of man's spirit. Love of God, God, Godhead is being taught in both in Bible and the Bhagavad Gita. But today's religious are not actually teaching here how to love God. I'm teaching how to love God, and that is the difference. Therefore, young people are attracted. Generalist, all right, so the end is the same, but it's the method of getting there that's different. Oh, God, no, the end is the same, and the method is also the same. But these so-called religious are not teaching people how to follow the method. I'm teaching them practically how to follow it. Anyways, let me ask you something. We have run on a great deal just recently. The biggest problem holding men and women back from the love of God is following the Ten Commandments is the problem. How should I put it? Well, the sexual problem. Now I'm stating something that's obvious. We all are going through this. But yes, everyone. English. And there is nothing in Western culture or religion that helps, that teaches or helps young person to cope up with this difficult problem. I went through it. We all have. Now, do you, in your message, give young people something to hang on to? And if so, what? Well, I ask my disciple to get married. I do not allow this nonsense of boys living with girlfriend. No. You must get yourself married and live like a gentleman. Jealous. Well, let me get a little more basic. How about when one is 14, 15, 16 years old? No bad. One thing is that we teach our boys how to become brahmachari, how to live the life of celibacy and how to control their senses. In many countries, marriage is generally does not take place until the boy is 20 or 24 or 25. And if the girl is about 16 or 17, and because they are experiencing spiritual pressure of Krishna consciousness, they are not simply interested in sex life. So we do not say don't mix with so we don't say don't mix with women stop sex life but we regulate everything under the higher principles of Krishna consciousness in this way everything goes nicely so does your disciple do not bite their tongue to or their lip 
i i want to share or um, that is uh, there there is a substitute uh, probati she yes i had taste that is krishna consciousness and is it is working i am already teaching western men and women how to control the sexual impulse my disciples that you see here are all americans they are not imported from india yes yes one thing i want to know that what do you think about the people like the famous mantra selling guru who turned out who turned me off and so many other people my daughter was very involved in that kind of thing for a while she is terribly disillusioned about the physiology is that western people are especially youngsters are still hankering after spiritual life now if somebody comes to them come to me and say some you need to get me i mean to say you have to follow these four principles no meat eating no gambling no intoxication no illicit sex many go away but this man the seller does not put any restriction just like a physician who says you can do whatever you like you simply take any medicine you simply take my medicine you will be cured the physician will be very popular in general yes he can kill a lot of people but he but he'll be very light no bad yes in the end a real physician says you cannot do this you cannot do that you cannot eat this this is a bother botheration for people they want something they very cheap therefore cheaters come and cheat them take this take the opportunity and people because, because people want to be cheated oh let us take this advantage you see so last call it advise these people you are god everyone is god and you just have to realize yourself you have simply forgotten you take this mantra and you will become god you will become very powerful and there is no need to control the senses you can think you can have an sweet sex life and whatever you do like people like this Hello. Hare Krishna Pranjal Prabhu, you went muted. Okay, Hari Bol, I can continue. So, people like this, oh, simply by 15 minutes meditation, I shall become God and I have to pay only $35. Many millions of people will be ready to do it. For Americans, $35 is not very much, but multiplied by a million dollars. it becomes 35 million dollars we cannot bluff like that we say that if you actually want spiritual life you have to follow the restrictions the commandment is you shall not kill so i shall not say yes you can kill the animal has no feeling the animal has no soul we cannot bluff in this way you see this kind of thing has disen- disenchanted an awful lot of young people So please try to help us. This movement is very nice. It will help your country. It will help the whole human society. It is a genuine movement. We are not bluffing or cheating. It is authorized. <clears throat> Journalists authorized by whom? Prabhupada. Authorized by Krishna, God. In India this Krishna consciousness philosophy has millions and millions of followers, 80% of the pop- population. If you ask any Indian, he will be able to tell you so many things about Krishna consciousness. but now the indians seems degraded decre- even more when you ask them about krishna they will say no shiva or something ganesh or nonsense journalist do you really think from a very practical standpoint that your movement has, has a chance to make it here in america probably from what i have seen it has it has a great chance we don't say give up your religion and come to us we say at least follow your own principles and then if you want to study with us if you want to study with us sometimes it happens that all those students have received their ma degree they go to foreign universities to study more why does it happen they want more enlightenment similarly any religious scriptures you may follow will give you enlightenment but if you find more in this krishna consciousness movement then why should you not accept it if you are serious about god why should you say oh i am christian i am jewish i cannot attend your meeting why should you say oh i cannot allow you to speak in my church 
If I am speaking about God, what objection can you have? Well, I couldn't agree with you more. Prabhupada, I am prepared to talk with any God-conscious man. Let us chalk out a program so that people may be benefited. But they want to go in their stereotyped way. If we see that by following a particular type of religious principle, one is developing love of God, that is first-class religion. But if one is merely developing his love for mammon, then what kind of religion is that? Hmm. Yeah, this is one really important argument when talking with these Christians. Because they say, if it's the same thing, then why should we take your thing? Because it's the same anyway. So you come to, you come to Christianity then, if, this, if it's the same thing. So we can, this is the proper answer to that. <clears throat> yes, bro. So any program that is developing love of God, that means that is the pre best program. So, like that we need to argue. Journalist. Right you are. Prabhupada, that is our test. You have to develop love for God. We don't say that you must follow Christianity or Mohammedanism or Judaism or Hinduism. We simply look to see whatever you are developing, your love of God. It. But they say, who is God? I am God. You see, everyone is told nowadays that everyone is God. Have you seen pictures of a smiling man with a mustache and pu pushed in nose? Before he died, he, he said he was God. Prabhupada, he was God? He was another rascal. Just see, this is going on. He was making propaganda that he was God. That means that people do not know what God is. Suppose I come to you and say that I am the president of the United States. Will you accept me? Journalist. No, I don't think I would. Prabhupada. These rascals. <laughs> These people are accepting them as God because they do not know what God is. That is the problem. It is just absolutely absurd that somebody comes along and tells you he is God. Prabhupada. But whoever accepts him as God is just as much as rascal. The man who says he's God, he's rascal number one. He's a cheater. And then the man who is cheated, he's also a rascal. He does not know what God is. He thinks that God is so cheap that you can find him in the marketplace. Of course, the Western concept is that man is created in the image of God. Consequently, God must look somewhat like man. Prabhupada. You have got so many sciences. So just find out what the actual image of God is. What his form is really like? Where is that department? You have got so many departments, research department, technology department, but where is the department that researches what God is? Is there any such department of knowledge? Journalist, there is no God department working tonight. I'll tell you that right now. Prabhupada, that is the difficulty, but the Krishna conscious movement is the department of how to know God. If you study with us, then you'll not accept any rascal as God. You'll accept only God as God. We are teaching about another nature beyond this material nature. This material nature is coming into existence and again dissolving. But God and his spiritual nature are eternal. We living entities are also eternal, without any end or any beginning. This Krishna consciousness movement is teaching how we can transfer ourselves to that eternal spiritual nature where God is residing. Journalist, that's man's guest. guest. Prabhupada. Yes, that is the quest. Everyone is trying to be happy because that is the living entity's prerogative. He is meant by nature to be happy. But he, does, but he does not know where he can be happy. He is trying to be happy in a place where there are four miserable conditions. Namely, birth, death, old age and disease. The scientists are trying to be happy and make other people happy. But what scientist has stopped old age, disease, death and rebirth? He, has any scientist succeeded? Journalist, I don't think so. Prabhupada, so what is this? Why do they not consider? We have made so much improvement. But what improvement we have, have we made in these four areas? They have not made any. And still they are very much proud of their advancement in education and technology. But the four primary miseries remain as they are, you see. And the scientists may have made a, a, advancement in medicine. But is there any remedy that can allow us to claim now there is no more diseases? Hmm. 
yeah, actually, they're trying to make the diseases less and less, but more diseases keep coming. And they are saying that, oh, we are fighting against enemy that keeps evolving. So they they can only make it worse. By fighting against it, they make it worse. It, you can see it practically even. You know, if they just let nature do its thing, maybe the factors and everything, the human, like the immunology would be more stronger. But now what they do, when you get sick, they give you antibiotics. It lessens your system and then it makes the all the bacters and these stronger or more they tolerate the antibiotics more and they evolve into like stronger versions so when they do this they try to prevent something and they create something more worse and stronger so then they at the end they have covid and they some coronaviruses going around and they evolve and they had to cl close the whole place and that's the end of this material trying to make the diseases go away. It doesn't work. Is there any such remedy? No. So then what is the scientist advancement? Rather, disease is increasing in so many new forms. Yeah. They have invented nuclear weapons. What good is that? Simply for killing. We Have they invented something so that no more men will die? That would be to their credit. But people are dying at every moment. And the scientists have simply invented something to ac accelerate their death. That's all. Is that to their credit? So there is still no solution to that. Yeah, and then they say, for example, they create the car. They cause so much more extra death by cre creating the car. But then they create the seed belt inside the, inside the car. And they say, with the seed belt, we are preventing death. Just before that, they created the car, which increased it so much, but still they are proud. Oh, we prevented that with the seed belt. Such a stupid scientist. So, okay, Haribo, anyone can continue. And they are trying to stop overpopulation, but where is their solution? Every minute, the population is increasing by 100 persons. There are the statistics. So there is no solution for birth. There is no solution for death. There is no solution for disease. And there is no solution for old age. Even a great scientist like Professor Einstein has uh, had to undergo old age and death. Why could he not stop old age? Everyone is trying to remain youthful, but what is the process? The scientists do not care to solve this problem because it is beyond their means. They are giving some kind of bluff, that's all. But Krishna consciousness is the solution and the whole thing is described in Bhagavad Gita. Let them try to understand it. At least let them make an experiment. The bona fide spiritual master the spiritual master will never say, I am God. The spiritual master will say, I am servant of God. Addressing the student body of Stockholm University in September 1973, Srila Prabhupada delineates the eight principal features that, according to Vedic teachings, characterize a genuine spiritual master and thus enable us to distinguish the saint from the charlatan. In order to enter into spiritual life, two things are required. As enunciated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one needs the mercy of the Supreme Lord and the mercy of the spiritual master. Brahmanda Bhavite Kono Bhagavan Ji Guru Krishna Prasade Pai Bhakti Lada which the living entities are wandering throughout the universe, changing bodies, transmigrating from one body to another from one place to another and from one planet to another. Brahmanda Bhavite, they are rotating within this material universe. This science is unknown to the modern educators. How the spirit soul is transmigrating from one body to another and how he is being transferred from one planet to another. But we have explained this in our book, Easy Journey to Other Planets. In fact, the Guru can help you Transmigrate from this planet directly to the spiritual sky, Boy Kuntaloka. 
where there are innumerable spiritual planets. The topmost planet in the spiritual sky is Krishna's planet called Bolo Vrindavan. The Krishna consciousness movement is trying to give information of how one can be transferred directly to the Golok Vrindavan planet, Krishna Loka. That is our mission. What is the difference between this material world and the spiritual world? The difference is that in the material world, you have to change your body, although you are eternal. Ajo nitto sasoto jam purano na hannate hannomane surire You are not destroyed after the annihilation of your material body, but you transmigrate to another body, which may be one of 8,400,000 forms. Jalajo, Navolokshani, there are uh, uh, 9 lakh forms in the water, uh, uh, 2 lakh forms of uh, uh, 20 lakh forms of trees to, uh, and plants, uh, 11 lakh forms of insect, 10 lakh forms of birds and 30 lakh forms uh, was scrolled down. Does anyone remember what this is? This is 3 million forms, 3 million forms of 3 million reptiles, reptiles bees. Quadruple. What is what is what is beast rules? Beasts, I mean quadrupeds, like cows, tigers. Yes, Prabhu. Like four-legged animals. Four-legged animals, yes. Yeah, yeah. Then you come to this human form of life. Now, it is your choice whether to be transferred again by the cycle of transmigration from one body to another in the lower species. Uh, now it is your choice whether to be transferred again by the cycle of transmigration from one body to another in the lower species of life or whether to be transferred to the spiritual sky, to the highest spiritual planet known as Golok Vrindavan. That is your choice. You have been given the chance of this human form of body to make your choice. In the lower species, you are completely under the control of material nature. But when the material nature gives you a chance to get this human from body, you can choose whatever uh, you like. So Prabhuji, yeah, so this, uh, I, I listened somewhere that uh, this lower species of life, there is no karma, right? The only karma has taken place when you get a human body, right? Yes, Prabhu, they don't accumulate new karma. They just... Yes, they, they only suffer from... Yeah, they suffer from... Means lower species means they are already suffering, so there is no karma uh, addition of new karma, right? Yes, otherwise they would never, uh, yeah. how to say, get the human body. And actually, yes, we can see that even being a like quadruplet with four legs or four legged mm -hmm. animal, it's really, it's really rare. Even being a bird is rare when you. Because when you look at these, what these are, the insects, there is 1.1 mm -hmm. 1 million. Most of the souls, in this, for example, yes. most of the souls in this planet, Earth, are in this category. It's even rare to be a like animal. Imagine there is so many microbes. No, here, 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 here you see how many types of trees are there, trees and yeah. plants. <laughs> So most we of, all, most yes. of the souls are in the lower and in these lower things that when we compare to the humans and animals, that's really rare to even be like that because most are in the insects and trees and in the sea. And only only four, four million, four million humans, right? Yeah, four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand. Yeah, it's really rare. What is 400,000? It said that uh, 8.4 million species, not... Oh, that is, that is 4 lakh. Not Indian found only one planet lab. across oh, the whole yes, universe. Yes, it's according the... Yes, yes, it's across the whole universe, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, 9.25. 
जानती देवा व्रत देवान पितृन जानती पितृ व्रता भूतानी जानती भूते जा जानती मत जाजी नो पीमा those who are trying to be elevated to the higher planets devlok or the planets of the demigods where the standard of living and the life span are very great may worship the demigods or if you want you may be transferred to the pitri lok to the planets of the ghosts or to the planet of where krishna lives janti mat jajino pi ma this all depends on your activities but samsara rotating wandering within this material world from one body to another or from one planet to another is not advised material existence is called samsara bhutta bhutta porillate you take your birth in some form of body you live for some time then you have to give up this body then you have to accept another body again life for some time then give up that body and then again accept another body this is called samsara the material world is compared to davana a forest fire as we have experienced no one goes to the forest to set a fire but still it takes place similarly no one within this material world wants to be unhappy everyone is trying to be very happy but one is forced to accept unhappiness in this material world from time immemorial to the present moment there have been occasional wars world wars even the people have devised various means to stop wars when i was a young man there was the league of nations in 1920 after the first world war different nations formed the league of nations just to arrange for peaceful living among themselves no one wanted war but uh, again there was a forest fire the second world war the second world war now they have devised the united nations but war is still going on the vietnam war the pakistan war and many others yes prabhupad is talking at that time this wars are going on so you may try to your best to live very peacefully but nature will not allow you there must be war and this war like feeling is always going on not only between nation and nation but also between man and man never and never even between husband and wife and father and son this war like feeling is going on this is called dawa nor a forest fire no one goes to the forest to set fire but automatically with the friction of dried bamboo uh sparks arise and the forest catches fire similarly although we do not want our happiness by our dealings we create enemies there is fighting and war this is so true this is called samsara dawana this forest fire of material existence goes on perpetually and the authorized person who can deliver you from this fire is called guru the spiritual master how does he deliver you what is his means consider the same example when there is a fire in the forest you cannot send a fire brigade or go there yourself with bucket full of water to extinguish it that is not possible then how will it be extinguished you need water to extinguish fire but where will the water come from from your bucket or your fire brigade no it must come from the sky only when there are torrents of rain from the sky will the blazing fire forest fire be extinguished these rains from the sky do not depend on your scientific propaganda or manipulation they depend on the mercy of the supreme lord so the spiritual master is compared to a cloud just as there are torrents of rain from a cloud so the spiritual master brings mercy from the supreme personality of god god it a cloud takes water from the sea it does not have its own water but takes water from the sea similarly the spiritual master gets mercy from the supreme personality of god it just see the comparison he has no mercy of his own but he carries the mercy of the supreme personality of god and that is the qualification of spiritual master the spiritual master will never say i am god i can give you mercy no that is not a spiritual master that is a bogus pretender the spiritual master will say i am a servant of god i have brought his 
mercy please take it and be satisfied this is a spiritual master business he is just like a mailman when a mailman delivers you some large amount of money it is not his own money the money is sent by someone else but he honestly delivers it. sir here is your money take it so you become very much satisfied with him although it is not his money he is giving you when you are in need and you get money from your father or someone else brought by the mailman you feel very much satisfied sir similarly we are all suffering in this village fire of material existence but the spiritual master brings the message from the supreme lord and delivers it to you and if you kindly accept it then you will be satisfied this is a business of spiritual master samsaro davanalo didha loka tramaya karuna guna guna praptasya kollana gunarno vasu bande guras vicharana rubinda thus the spiritual master is offered to us and says say you have brought mercy from the supreme lord therefore we are much obliged to you you have come to deliver us so we offer our respectful obeisances that is the meaning of this verse the first qualification of the spiritual master or guru is that he brings you the message to stop the blazing fire in your heart this is the taste everyone has a blazing fire within his heart a blazing fire of anxiety that is the nature of material existence always everyone has anxiety no one is free from it even a small bird has anxiety if you give the small bird some grains to eat he will eat them but he would not eat very peacefully he will look this way and that way it's somebody coming to kill me this is material existence everyone even a president like mr nixon is full of anxiety what to speak of others even gandhi in our country he was full of anxiety all politicians are full of anxiety they may hold a very exalted post but still a material disease anxiety is there so if you want to be anxiety less then you must take shelter of the guru the spiritual master and the rest of the guru is that by following his instructions you will be free from anxiety this is the test do not try to find a cheap guru or a fashionable guru just as you sometimes keep a dog as a fashion if you want to keep a guru as a person <laughs> i have a guru that will not help you must accept a guru who can extinguish the blazing fire of anxiety within your heart that is the first test of guru the second test is mahapurubho kirtana nitya gita paditra madan manasso rasero the second symptom of the guru is that he is always engaged in chanting glorifying lord chaitanya mahaprabhu that is his vision mahaprabhu kirtana nitya gita the spiritual master is chanting the holy name of the lord and dancing because that is the remedy for all calamities within this material world at the present moment no one can meditate the so called meditation now popular in the west is humbug it is very difficult to meditate in this disturbing age of holy the age of quarrel and hypocrisy therefore shastra scripture says pite jat bharato vishnu in the satya yuga the age of truth when people used to uh, live for 100 thousands years balviki muni attain perfection by meditating for 60000 years but now we have uh, uh, so now uh, but now we have no guarantee that we are going to live for 60 years or even 60 hours so meditation is not possible in this age in the next stage the treta yuga people perform rituals as they are describing the vedic shastra tritayam jajeto mathyam vibhag gathani big big sacrifice that requires huge amounts of money in the present age people are very poor so they cannot perform these sacrifices in dapur yuga the age just prior to the present age it was possible to worship the deity opulently in the temple but nowadays in the kali yuga that is also an impossible task therefore the general recommendation is follow tat antat hari kirtana in this age of kali one can attain all perfection simply uh, by uh, uh, one can attain all perfection simply by chanting the holy name of the lord the krishna consciousness movement is meant to spread such chanting they should know how to integrate this movement of chanting and dancing it has been going on for the last 500 years in india it is very popular but in the western countries we have just introduced it 5 or 6 years ago 
how people are taking to it and they are feeling happy. This is the only process for this age. Therefore, the Guru is always Therefore, the Guru is always engaged in chanting. Mahaprabhu Kirtana Ritta Gita, chanting and dancing. Unless he performs it himself, how can he teach his disciples? So his first symptom is that he will give such instructions that immediately you will feel relief from all anxiety. And his second symptom is that he is always personally engaged in chanting the holy name of the Lord and dancing. Mahaprabhu Kirtana Ritta Gita Boditra Madhan Manosara Sena. A spiritual master enjoys transcendental bliss within his mind by chanting and dancing. Unless you become blissful, you cannot dance. You cannot dance artificially. When devotees dance, it is not artificial. They feel some transcendental bliss and therefore they dance. It is not that they are dancing dogs. So, no, their dancing is performed from the spiritual platform. Romancho compass to Torongo Bhajo. There are sometimes transformation of the body with spiritual symptoms, sometimes crying, sometimes the hair standing on him. There are so many symptoms. These are natural. These symptoms are not to be imitated, but when one is spiritually advanced, they are visible. The heart symptoms of the Guru is Si Vibhruha Dhano Nitto Anap Sringaro Tan Mandiro Marjanadu the spiritual master's duty is to engage the disciples in worshiping the deity, so we grow. In all of our 100 centers, we engage in deity worship. Here in Stockholm, this worship has not yet been fully established, but we worship the pictures of Lord Chaitanya and the Guru. In other centers, as the ones in England and America, there is deity worship. Sri Vigroha Dhano Nitto Nana Sindara Ton Mandiro Marjana Do. Deity worship means to dress the deity very nicely, to clean the temple very nicely, to offer nice foodstuff to the deity, and to accept the remnants of the deity's foodstuff for our eating. This is the method of deity worship. Deity worship is done by the Guru himself, and he also engages his disciple in that worship. This is the third symptom. The fourth symptom is Chatur Vidha Sri Bhagavad Prasada Sada Anna Triptan Hori Bhakta Sangha. Jittaviva Triptim Bhajata Sadaiva Bhamde Guru Sri Charanar Vindra. The spiritual master encourages distribution of prasada, remnants of Krishna's food to the public. Ours is not a dry philosophy. We simply talk and go, uh, no. We distribute prasadam, very sumptuous prasadam. In every temple, we offer prasadam to anyone who comes. In each and every temple, we already have from 50 to 200 devotees. And outsiders also come and take prasadam. The prasadam distribution is another symptom of the genuine spiritual master. If you eat bhagavat prasad, prasadam, then gradually you become spiritualized. It has this potency. Therefore, it is said that Realization of God begins within the tongue. Seven mukhe hi jivhado. If you engage your tongue in the service of the Lord, then you realize God. What is that engagement of the tongue? You chant the holy name of the Lord and you take this prasada, remnants of food offered to the Lord. Then you become self-realized, God-realized. By these two methods, you do not have to be very, you do not have to be very highly educated or be a philosopher, a scientist or a rich man to realize God. If you just sincerely engage your tongue in the service of the Lord, you will realize Him. It is so simple. It is not very difficult. Therefore, the Guru, the spiritual master, introduced this prasadam program. Sadan Anna Triptan Hari Bhakta Sangan. Hari Bhakta Sangan means in the association of devotees, you cannot do it outside. Pitta Ivo Triptim Bhajato Sadaiva. When the Guru is fully satisfied that prasadam distribution is going on, he is very much pleased and he engages himself in the devotional service of the Lord by chanting and dancing. This is the fourth symptom. The fifth symptom is 
श्री राधिका माधव अपार मधुर्य लीला गुण रूप नाम नाम प्रतीक्षण साधन रूप आश्रम बंदे गुरु श्री चरण अरविंद The spiritual master is always thinking of the past time of Krishna and his consorts, you know, the Radha Rani and the Gopis. Sometimes he is thinking about Krishna's past time with the cowherd boys. This means that he is always thinking of Krishna engaged in some kind of past times. Pratikshana sadhana lulubhasa. Pratikshana means he is thinking that way. 24 hours a day that is krishna consciousness one must be engaged 24 hours a day in thinking of krishna you have to make yourself a program like this we at least have made such a program all the boys and girls in the krishna consciousness movement are engaged 24 hours daily not just officially not that once a week they meditate or go to some temple no they engage 24 hours a day the next simple symptom is निकुंजुनो Some are thinking of becoming assistants to Nando and Mara Josoda, and some are thinking of becoming God's servants. Some are thinking of becoming flower trees, fruit trees, calves or cows in the Vrindavan. There are five kinds of melos: Santo, Bhenireshan, uh, Dasso, Servitorship, Sokho, Friendship, Vatsalo, Parenthood, and Madhurjo Conjugalla. Everything is there in the spiritual world. Chintamuni Prakaro Satmasu. In the spiritual sky, even the land is spiritual, the trees are spiritual, the fruit is spiritual, the flowers are spiritual, the water is spiritual, the servants are spiritual, the friends are spiritual, the mothers are spiritual, the fathers are spiritual, the Lord is spiritual, and the associates are spiritual. It is all absolute. Although there are varieties, in the material world, their spiritual varieties are merely reflected. Just like trees on a river bank, a tree is reflected in the water, but reflected how upside down. Similarly, this material world is a reflection of the spiritual world, but a perverted reflection. In this spiritual world, there is love between Radha and Krishna. Krishna is always young, novo jogono, and Radha Rani is always young because she is Krishna's pleasure potency. Sri Radhika Madhava or Opara, Joy or Radha Madhava. We are seen not. Krishna alone, but Krishna with his eternal consort, Simhati Radharani. There is eternal love between Radharani and Krishna. Therefore, the Vedanta Sutra says, Janma di Asya Jata, Srimad Bhagavatam 1.1.1. The absolute truth is that from which everything emanates. In this world, we find love between mother and son, love between wife and husband, love between master and servant, between friend and friend, between the master and the dog or the cat or the cow but these are only reflection of the spiritual world is no is also the good lover of the animals the calves and the cows just as here we love dogs and cats there is no loves cows and calves you have seen this in pictures of krishna so the propensity to love even an animal is there in the spiritual world otherwise how can it be reflected this one is simply reflection if in the reality there is nothing like that, how can it be reflected here? So everything is there in the spiritual world. But to understand that original propensity to love, you have to practice Krishna consciousness. Here in this world, we are experiencing frustration. Here we love, a man loves a woman or a woman loves a man, but there is frustration. After some time, they are divorced because their love is a perverted reflection. There is no real love in this world. It is simply lust. Real love in, is in the spiritual world between Radha and Krishna. Real love is there between Krishna and the gopis. Real love is there in the friendship between Krishna and his coward boys. Real love is there between Krishna and the cows and the calves. Real love is there between Krishna and the trees, flowers and water. In the spiritual world, everything is love. But within this material world, we are satisfied merely with the reflection of the things in the spiritual world. So now that we have this opportunity to, opportunity of human life, let us understand 
Krishna. That is Krishna consciousness. Let us understand Krishna and as the Bhagavad Gita 4.9 says, Janma karma chame divyam evam jobiti tattaha. You should understand Krishna in truth, not superficially. Learn the signs of Krishna. This is an instruction. You should simply try to love Krishna. The process is that you worship the deity, you take prasadam, you chant Krishna's holy names, and you follow the instruction of the spiritual master. In this way, you will learn how to understand Krishna, and then your life will be successful. This is our Krishna consciousness movement. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Very nice. Haribo. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you so much for reading. Okay, now let's go to six as the compares. Cheto darpana marjanam bhava maha davagni nirvapanam Sreyah kairava chandrika vitaranam vidyavadu jivanam anandam budivardanam pratipadam purnam ritasvadanam sarvatmasnapanam param vijayate sri krishna sankirtanam Namna Makari Bahutani Jisarva Shaktis Tatarak Vitanya Mitak Smarana Nakalaha Eta Drishita Vakripa Bhagavan Mamapi Durdaiva Midrisha Mahajini Nanu Raga. Trina Dapi Suni Chena Taro Rapi Sahishnuna Amani Namana Dena Kirtaniya Sadahari. Nadanam Najanam Nasundarim Kavitam Vajakadisha Kamaye Mama Janmani Janmanishvare Bhavatat Bhaktirahai to Kitvai Ainandatana Jakin Karam Patitam Mam Vishami Bhavam Butho Kripayatava Pada Pankajas Hidat Huli Sadrisham Vichintayam Nayanam Galadash Rutaraya Vadanam Gatkara Rutaya Gira Pulakarinichitam Vapukada Tavanama Grahane Pavishati Yuga Itam Nimeshena Jakshusha Pravirsha Itam Shunya Itam Jagat Sarvam Govinda Virahename Ashli Shivapa, the Radampi Nashtumam, Adarshan, and Marma Hatam Karotuva, it had the Tava with the Tatu Lampato, Matprana, and that has to save an Aparaha. Haribo, glory to the Sri Krishna Sankirtan, which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years and extinguishes the fire of conditional life of repeated birth and death. This Sankirtan movement is the prime benediction for humanity at large because it spreads the rays of the benediction moon. It is the life of all transcendental knowledge. It increases the ocean of transcendental bliss and it enables us to fully taste the nectar for which we are always anxious. Oh my Lord, your holy name alone can render all benediction to living beings and thus you have hundreds and millions of names like Krishna and Govinda. In these transcendental names, you have invested all your transcendental energies. There are not even hard and fast rules for chanting these names. O oh my Lord, out of kindness, you enable us to easily approach you by your holy names, but I am so unfortunate that I have no attraction for them. One should chant the holy name of the Lord in a humble state of mind, thinking oneself lower than the straw in the street. One should be more tolerant than a tree, devoid of all sense of sense of false prestige and should be ready to offer all respect to others in such a state of mind one can chant the holy name of the lord constantly oh almighty lord i have no desire to accumulate wealth nor do i desire beautiful women nor do i want any number of followers I only want your causeless devotional service, birth after birth. O son of Maharaj Nanda, Krishna, I am your eternal servitor. It's somehow or other I have fallen into the ocean of birth and death. Please pick me up from this ocean of death and place me as one of the atoms at your lotus feet. 
My Lord, when will my eyes be decorated with tears of love flowing constantly when I chant your holy name? When will my voice choke up and when will the hairs of my body stand to end at the recitation of your name? O oh Govinda, feeling your separations, I am considering a moment to be like 12 years or more. Tears are flowing from my eyes like torrents of rain and I am feeling all vac vacant in the world in your absence. I know no one but Krishna is my Lord and he shall remain safe. so even if he handles me roughly by his embrace or makes me broken hearted by not being present before me. He is completely free to do anything and everything for he is always my worshipful Lord unconditionally. Hari Lord. Shri Sikshastram ki jai, Hari Nam Sankir, jai, Panchadadva ki jai, Yananda Prabhu ki jai, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai, Jagat Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Jai, Hari Hari, Hari Hari,